Thanks for tuning in to Witch Wednesdays with Steph and Tara, where we share our knowledge as we chat about a new witchcraft topic every Wednesday morning. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. This is Steph. And this is Tara. And you are listening to episode 58, Altars in Witchcraft. Do, do, do. So altars are one of those topics that is a little bit confusing. And we have talked about altars before, um, whether or not we have them or use them. Um, and we've mostly just talked about them in passing. But there is enough information on them and we've gotten enough questions that it is enough for a full podcast episode that we thought was <laughs> important. Um, but since witchcraft, Wicca, and paganism all get used interchangeably, we have those like, one of the first episodes in season one. So check yes. that out if you, if you want to know the differences between those three terms. Um, but because they are so intermingled, there's a lot of confusion about what an altar is, what types there are, and whether one is required when practicing witchcraft. And the answers to all those questions depend on whether you're talking about witchcraft, Wicca, or paganism. And your personal path. So there's a million options. <laughs> so let's start with what even is an altar. Yes. An altar can be used for many different things, but it's generally considered a space that is used for sacred workings. An altar can be a box with items in it. It can be a full table or a shelf or inside a cupboard. Uh, it can be permanent, semi-permanent, or portable. Uh, all of those options, which we'll get into. But they are just specific areas where you can focus your mind and your intention on a specific purpose, whether that's um, spell workings, ancestors, or just your magical practice in general. Yes. So what are the different types of altars? There mm -hmm. are a lot. Um, what we're going to list here is just a few of the more common varieties. Um, and they aren't either or. You can merge these different types that we're going to talk about. Um, you can have more than one going at once in different areas of your house. You can have like different sizes of, of things in different types. One can be on a table someplace and one can be tucked away in a shoebox. You can have all, all kinds of different options. Yes. So the first one that is one of the most common is a deity altar. Mm -hmm. And this is solely based around your deity. In uh -huh. Wicca, you will find that they're based around a god and a goddess on the same altar because Wicca is the dual religion that we talked about. Yep. All about uh, there, are, there are other pagan faiths where they have a single deity per altar. Uh, they're just a place where you can be with your deity, interact, leave offerings and gifts, do workings with them or for them. Um, if you have more than one deity, it's up to you if you want to combine them onto a single altar. Um, it depends really on your relationship with them and whether you think they'd, they'd work well together or be like comfortable sharing an altar because some people yes. do you have more. And, and some deities are, are opposite um, ends of the spectrum and probably won't work Should. well together <laughs> and, and, and do, you know, similar kinds of, of workings, but then some really do, but then some will feel slighted if they, if they don't have their own altar. So it all depends on your working relationship with them yes, so we have the gotten, deities themselves yeah we have gotten a lot of questions about working with deities and and how to find your deity and that's really just your personal, personal preference path. so and depends on your path and it involves doing research into deities it depends um wh what your your lineage or your religious beliefs not that you have to have celtic background in order to work with celtic deities that's what we don't believe that there are no. some witches that that do believe that strongly that you can't you know work with the norse gods if you don't have some sort of scandinavian like background yeah. but we don't believe that so no. um, you can you can work with any sort of pantheon that you work want with but you're all, called to yeah, yeah whatever you feel called to but it all it involves researching and learning about all of the different paths and deities and how other people work with them, um, just what, what they can offer you, what you can offer them, how you can, you know, work together with them. Some will come to you right away. There are deities that are known for um, being more That's receptive. <laughs> um, that would be in the Celtic tradition. Um, Bridget and Caridwin are, are way more, you know, receptive. Yeah. Um, Hecate, you gotta, you gotta work for. So it, it all depends on um, how, 
you would like to interact with them. And um, we, we talked just in the last episode about um, Bridget being associated with the hearth, hearth and home and Smith working and poetry and all of those different things. So if that's kind of what you're thinking um, in your, you're going to work on in your spell work, then she might be a good deity for you. So just look, you know, what they're, they're associated with and things like that, and then just meditate on it um, and ask them to, to come to you, present themselves to you if they would like to work with you in any sort of spell work. Um, And then from there, you just build a relationship with them and ultimately set up this altar. If you feel like a deity altar would be a good choice for you. Yep. The next type of altar is an ancestor altar. This is more common with traditional witches and older tradition paganism. Um, yes. Not not that, you know, new witches don't have it or anything like that, but you you, do, you see it um, Day of the Dead in yeah. Mexican tradition. That is an ancestor altar completely. Um, if you aren't familiar with uh, Day of the Dead or don't know what I'm talking about, um, watch Coco on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> Great app. <laughs> There's a list second one in a row where I'm mentioning a Disney movie. But... I love it. I love it. Um, Guess Coco, about Disney Plus. <laughs> Coco is adorable. I did not think it I was really going to like Coco, but it's like one of my favorite Disney movies. I love it. It's super but cute. Completely all about Day of the Dead. Show lots of ancestor altars. Um, so the most common is an ancestor altar working with deceased relatives, which is yes. what they show in Coco. Um, on there, you would have photographs of them, trinkets that belong to them or remind you of them, just general things that connect you with your ancestors so you can continue to work with them after they've passed on. Yeah. So these are ones where you know their face, you know their name. There is a, another type of ancestor altar, altar that's based on your lineage. So some people mm-hmm. have like a really strong Celtic, Scandinavian, Slavic lineage, just to name a few. You can have absolutely any. Um, and they feel called to work with the energies and spirits of the, of that heritage. Yes. So these would be older ancestors and you don't know their names or who they are, but you feel connected to them as part of their lineage. Yes. And this mm-hmm. goes beyond paganism. Um, there's a lot of Chinese traditions that go into the whole lineage. So, and in that case, you would have uh, things on your altar that remind you of, your lineage or of of that lineage um yes. you know and there's lots of everybody has like their own um symbolism you can use you know runes if it's a scandinavian type um lineage for celtic there's a, there's so many options of things that you can decorate sort of your altar with just to yeah. remind you of of that sort of lineage it's just something that makes you feel connected to your ancestors and the last which is like just a variation um, is called a family altar. And it, it's similar to the traditional ancestor altar, except you are working with the energies of those that are still living as well as deceased yeah. relatives and all of your lineage. So it's kind of like all the options combined. Um, so obviously these can be as specific or general as you like, but you can have, you know, photos of li- still living family members on this ancestor altar, uh, especially if they are not in the home with you. Maybe your grandmother is the one that introduced you to witchcraft and you feel like really strongly connected with her, but unfortunately she lives in another state, but she's still alive. You can definitely use a photo of a grandma on your family altar and continue to work with her spirit, even if she's not there. I was going to say the most of these that I've seen set up are families of practitioners. So um, like my growing up, I had a babysitter that was Wiccan. And when she went to college and her sister got married, her mom kept a family altar in the home. And there was a section for her one daughter. There was another section for her other daughter. There was her section. And then she also had her ancestors, like her mom who had passed and her grandmother who had passed down their grimoire and things of that nature. So she kept it all together in one place like you said, just because her daughters weren't in the state, weren't here anymore, but they all practiced together when they got together. So it was a family of practitioners. Yes. That can have a really strong then energy for you to work with. Very much so. The next type of altar that we wanted to mention is a spirit altar. Now this is very similar to a deity altar, except this is working with a particular spirit or a couple of spirits. 
uh, because some practitioners work with spirits in the same way that others work with deities. So this yeah. is kind of where, where fairy altars would fall. So yeah, if you like to work with the fae, yeah, if you like to work with the fae, that's probably the, mo- the most common type of um, spirit altar. Uh, if you have it set up in the house, that's usually brownies are the brownies. type of fae <laughs> that, are, that are in the home. Um, you can definitely set up a, a brownie altar, um, but a lot of fairy altars are set up outside. Yes. Most I've seen have been set up outside, um, but I don't know many people that work with brownies currently. So the next one we wanted to mention is an intention altar. So you have probably seen these, for example, the intention is prosperity, love, protection, or luck. Um, Those are very common ones. So you have items on your altar that represent that specific intention, which we have talked about lots about correspondences. Lots. So they could be <laughs> candles, crystals, herbs. Um, if it's a prosperity altar, you would have money on it. Um, you could use colored altar cloths. You know, green would be for a prosperity altar. And you place them in the space that you want that intention to be. So yes. a love or fertility altar would be in the bedroom or prosperity would be in the office. Mm-hmm. And they can be changed out as often as you want. You just have to remember to cleanse the space. But the thing about the intention altar is that it is longer than a single working because you can do a single, you know, maybe candle working or something in 30 minutes, but for prosperity, but a prosperity intention altar is set up over maybe the course of a couple of days um, that Mm -hmm. you're continually adding something to that space something to that working or just a specific altar in general a lot of people have you know a home protection altar set up and it just doesn't come down that a lot a lot of people yes because you're always wanting to keep your home protected and um, generally in the living space or by the front door because you are remembering it and recharging it every single time you look at it yes I've always seen I don't think I've ever seen a home protection that isn't near a, a door but they can be set up anywhere in the home. Like you said, you don't want to take those down generally. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, there's tons and tons and tons of different intentions you can set that you want to last longer than a single spell. Similarly um, is a manifestation altar. And it's a space where you put items you'd like to manifest, but which sounds very much like an intention altar, but it can be multiple things that you want to manifest at once. So an intention altar is for that specific intention, whereas a manifestation altar is a little more flexible and fluid. And it's the most common variation of this is to set up sort of like a weekly altar where you place items that remind you of things you want to manifest in that week. Like you have a specific career goal that you want to meet that week you have a specific goal of cleaning up something in your house, maybe Um, a specific goal related to something that you want to do for your family or friends that week. So you put different things on that altar to kind of, um, if you're a visual person, remind you of what you are trying to manifest and what you are asking the universe universe for just, you know, in that week, obviously any sort of time frame is fine, but that, that weekly one is the most common manifestation altar. I was going to say, this always reminds me of the vision boards that people make. Yes, it's a vision board. (laughs) It's basically a vision board in an altered form. Yeah, (laughs) you can put whatever you want on it, but this is what you're focusing on. (laughs) And it's, like she said, it's really good to do weekly. You can do monthly or longer, but you need to be reminded of what you're trying to manifest in most cases, so. And the last one is a working altar. So this is probably the most common altar because it's so versatile and it's used in witchcraft as well as Wicca. Yeah. So a working altar is an altar that you're probably most familiar with. If you've seen them on Instagram or something where you actually undertake your magical workings on. When I had altar, this is the kind I had. Yeah. Rather than being a space where you communicate with deities or ancestors or manifest your specific intentions, a working altar is where you do all of your magical workings. Mm -hmm. Uh, You may keep your tools there. Um, any current workings that you have going on. It's like a desk, like a working space. Uh, You can also use it for meditation. A lot of people use it for divination because it's the sacred space that they set up and they keep their tarot cards on it. So it's already sort of um, charged with that, that specific energy. Uh, You don't have to, you know, cleanse it every time if you don't want to, it's kind of like already ready to go your working space. 
Um, they're also really good to have at the center of your circle if you cast circles, which are absolutely not a requirement. No. Um, that way you don't forget things outside of your circle because that happens a lot um, that you think you've gathered all your tools, but maybe you're missing. You forgot one. <laughs> your matches or something like that. And you're missing just like that one thing, but you yeah. already cast the circle. It is very, you have to like cut a hole or like a doorway in the circle so you can go out and then come back in and then seal the door up again. It's a process. And then you have to reseal it and then you have to, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of witches do keep their working altar at the center of their circle so they know that there's nothing missing because all of their tools are on right that there. altar. Everything that they need to cast whatever working they're going to be doing. So those are definitely the most common. Um, and the ones that you see on Instagram are probably the most elaborate. Yes. That just oh, like <laughs> have a lot of stuff. Um, and there are a lot of photos and things you can check out on Instagram. Um, the, it differs between practitioners of yes. whether or not you think you should share it. A lot of practitioners think that it is your sacred space and you should not share photos of it and nobody should touch it and nobody should look at it but you. Um, mm-hmm. But then there are a lot of other practitioners, um, especially ones that are on Instagram because they are helping beginner witches and beginner witches like to see what their options are um so yes. they share sort of what their altars look like so you can get ideas but they can be as simple or as elaborate as you want which gets into what does it have to look, look like, like. <laughs> so the very first thing obviously that we want to say about this is that it does not have to look like anything nope <laughs> and it's, it's up to you <laughs> yes it's your personal sacred space it absolutely does not have to look like anything. It doesn't have to be as elaborate as the ones you see on Instagram. It doesn't have to be something that you share at all. It is Mm-mm. for you and you alone. So there are no rules. That said, <laughs> if you are following a very specific tradition, like a tradition or subsect of Wicca, they yes. have specific layouts that should be used to set up an altar. And each item has its own specific placement on the altar. Yes. Um, that often aligns with the directions or points on the pentacle. Almost always designed to not only align with the points of the pentacle, but also generally the cardinal directions, north, east, south, west. Yes. So if often if you follow, you know, that very specific subsect, you are in a coven. Mm -hmm. Um, those, Those kind of go hand in hand. Not always. There are, you know, lots of people who are only learning online or something like that. Um, but a lot of those very specific ones do require initiation and yes. the coven. It's hard will to then, do an initiation by yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the coven will then have like their own rules and things um, of, of how you set it up. So that's where you would get that information. Obviously we are not in a coven or neither of us follow mm-hmm. any sort of specific subsect or traditions that require that. So we do not Correct. have all of the information that on that. Um, the general items that go on a Wiccan altar are a little more specific than if you're just doing witchcraft. And those yes. are um, two candles, one to represent the god and the goddess. They're often black and white, but they can be any color. Um, there's usually statues, a chalice, which represents the the feminine, that water. Um, mm-hmm. There's the athame, which represents the masculine. That's that um, ceremonial knife. You don't actually use it for, for cutting, but it's often used to Cast direct circles. Energy. I was gonna say direct energy. Yes. Uh, there may be a bowling, which is that curved knife that cuts herbs and things. Uh, a wand, incense burner, which represents air. Bowl of salt, which represents earth. earth. Bowl of water. Um, many Wiccans use a bell to start and end a ceremony or ritual. Very, very common. Yes. Um, pentacles. Always pentacles. <laughs> all the pentacles, guys. We talked all about that. Um, there may be an offering of some sort, a cauldron, uh, crystals, plants, uh, or the Book of Shadows. All these options. Um, if you are Wiccan and are following a Wiccan path and have never set up a Wiccan altar, um, we have recommended before Harmony Nice on YouTube. And she goes over her entire altar and her entire setup. And it is Wiccan-based. So you can see all of these things in action and just how she sets hers up. Now, she doesn't use um, the points of the pentacle or any cardinal directions she just gives you one example of how to set up a wiccan altar and all of the like little things that she puts on it so if you're interested in that definitely check her out yeah that's one thing that i know a lot of beginner wiccans struggle with is what to put on their altar um she's got a really good general layout 
Uh, and if you get that set up and something doesn't feel right, you can always change it, guys. That's what is great about witchcraft and uh, Wicca is it's so personalized to what works for you. Um, so even this list of things we've given you, you don't need all of them. You don't need, I mean, it's really just based on personal preference, but she does a really good general walkthrough and where things go. So, yeah, so you definitely don't need all of them. You may not need all of them every time. Like one time you may set it up really elaborately. And then another time you have just like a simple spell that you're doing and you know, your items are scattered. Maybe you don't want to gather them all and you just need a candle and a crystal and you're done. So it, it's up yep. to you, especially for general witchcraft. Um, it can be whatever you like you even less than what's on a Wiccan altar. Cause you don't need yeah. anything representing a God and goddess. If you're doing general witchcraft. Um, and this also applies to the location or, or style as well, which, uh, we talked about can be permanent, semi-permanent, transient, or completely portable. So one of the best ones I ever saw was in a shoebox, guys. She was still in the broom closet, and so her entire altar was in a shoebox. She could put it in uh, the box underneath her bed and pull it out as needed. It had everything she needed. It was great. So I mean, it can be really a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, a permanent altar are those that are set up all the time. So those are on tables, shelves, or in cupboards. Um, The items don't move. Um, This may be what your your deity or ancestor altar looks like, where they just, it just stays. Um, Mm -hmm. And they really can be any sort of space that you activate. So technically, I have a beauty altar. If you want to think about it that way, because I have a specific space and like, it does not have to be elaborate. But on a space where I get ready, I like light a little candle, the mirrors in front of me, and then in the drawer below me are all of my makeup supplies to get ready. So it's just like this space and to make it more, you know, magical and setting an intention, like as you're applying your makeup and things like that, you would just think about, you know, sort of like glamour magic and what you're trying to, to bring about in yourself, positive intentions, self-love, like all of that stuff. So could be a beauty altar that you have so they they're all over the place (laughs) yes a semi-permanent altar would come and go as you need it so it's like setting up for the full moon ritual and then cleaning up afterwards uh they can also be sabbat related and change with the seasons so those are pretty common as well yes very Um, very common because there are we're not just talking about making moon water, but for mm-hmm. like a full moon ritual, there are a lot of, you know, different things that you can use, like candles, water, crystals, like all of those things. You kind of have them set up like in an altar manner when you're we're doing that sort of longer ritual. But then if you clean everything up a- afterwards, that's more like a semi-permanent altar. Yes. The next one is a transient altar and that moves from place to place in your house. And that's kind of just like moving all of your tools with you wherever you go. So if you're going to do like an outdoor ritual one day, set that all up and then bring it inside and you do a different ritual with like the same tools and stuff in your bedroom the next day, that would make it more like a transient altar. Again, <laughs> the it would, would, which would be the last one. That's a portable altar. Uh, <laughs> So those are made in a container that you move. So it could be a shoebox, it can be a suitcase. Um, mint tins are very popular now. Those are all over uh, Pinterest. They contain small items that you know you're going to need. So you take them almost everywhere with you. And this is in particular if you do spells while you're on the move. So they would contain small candles, bottles of salt, crystals, like things that are the most common um, yeah. spellcasting tools. So travelers often have these. I know travel is, is pretty limited right now, but people who like to travel have these, um, as well as witches in the broom closet, of course, because if you can't have all of your stuff out, if people don't know that you're practicing, you don't want them to know, then yes, hiding things in a shoebox and shoving it under your bed is perfect. It's magic, guys! So if you want to see how to set up a traveling altar, uh, check out Witch of Wonderlust on YouTube. We've recommended her before, too. And yes. she has a whole setup of an entire episode on traveling altars and she has her whole setup of how she sets up hers but then also gives examples of other ones including that um mint tin one like altoid tins are like really popular for making traveling altars because they you can fit like birthday candles in there and just like a couple of crystals like a mini bottle of salt just like tiny little things that you would need when you're on the go so they're really cute 
There's also a lot on Etsy. If you want to look at some of the ones that are available, you don't need to buy one, but just looking at them for inspiration, they are so cute guys. Like I've maybe lost hours looking at them. <laughs> and then the last most common question is whether or not you need an altar to <laughs> practice witchcraft, which no! we've already gone over numerous times. But just to reiterate, you absolutely do not need an altar to practice witchcraft. They can nope. be very useful. But it's not necessary because we've talked about witchcraft is just using energy and intention to manifest things that you want in the physical realm. Yeah. So any sort of supplies are unnecessary. We had the episode all about common witchcraft tools, but you need absolutely none of them. No. Nope. Uh, so all altar is you. <laughs> yeah. Altar is one of those things that it can be very useful and, and helpful and um, a lot of witches do you enjoy them, but absolutely not necessary in, in any form, even if it's a portable shoe box, it's not necessary. Nope. And you can also change your mind on using altars. You can only, you can use one only certain times of the year as your practice shifts. Like maybe you really only recognize the fall and winter Sabbaths, which is me. Uh, <laughs> and it, you know, you don't have a Sabbath altar sort of set up for in bulk and Ostara, but maybe for Samhain and Yule, like you love setting that kind of stuff up, that's fine. You can definitely change your mind throughout like different times of the year and just whatever is easiest for you in your living space and how you feel called to use one or not yep. use one. Totally up to you. So absolutely not necessary. And you can change your mind if you want. Yeah. And I've mentioned before, I used to have an altar and I don't anymore just because my dog would try and eat anything um, <laughs> that is out and about and he is all over the place. So as your practice change, as your lifestyle changes, the altar should fit you in your practice. So if it works at one point in your life, go for it. If it doesn't work anymore or vice versa, even if you haven't worked with an altar before and you just feel called to set one up, go for it. They can be really pretty guys, which we know is important. <laughs> yes. I currently do not have one. I have not had one in a long time just because I don't like the stuff all over the place. I have all of my tools in um, this one box and that tool storage overview video um, is actually up on our YouTube channel. So if you want to check that out, which Wednesdays on YouTube, um, that is there. It was on Patreon about six months ago. So if you were a patron, you've already seen it. Um, <laughs> it's migrating but, over. Yes. So, so uh, patrons have first access to all videos and the videos that are on patrons now won't be up on YouTube for like a year. So <laughs> definitely check out Patreon first. But um, my storage collection is on YouTube if you want to see kind of like everything that I have. Um, but for the future, it's not obviously ready now because we are not doing construction yet, but we are remodeling <laughs> the upstairs of our house. That's where the master and it runs like the full length of the house. So that's where our master bedroom is going to be on one half. And then the other half is going to um, have like some storage closets and then a desk at one end. And I have not had like a desk in years, but since we started shipping out uh, these Sabbath boxes, I've needed, you know, a printer and space for supplies and stuff. So I am setting up a desk up there and I already picked out the one that I want and it has nice. a little like shelf across the top and it would be very easy for me to set up a little altar along that shelf on the top which is why I picked it because I can't foresee myself using that desk for anything other than which Wednesday Etsy related things like a whole witchcraft area um that so I think nice. that I will um set up some sort of little altar along the top of that but we have a long way to go until <laughs> that is finished <laughs> and I mean it will definitely be in the calendar year of 2021 but um, definitely going to take a few months. But eventually when that happens, I will put that up on Instagram because I have no personal issues with showing my altar or space, space or any of my stuff that it doesn't bother me. I don't think that <laughs> that takes away from it at all if I if I share that. So in a few months. But if you also don't have issues with sharing yours, then definitely um, post it on Instagram and tag us in it. We would love to see what you have. Love but seeing altars. I, we totally understand if it's your sacred space and you don't want to share it. That's fine too. Yes. <laughs> no <laughs> peer pressure there. You can definitely leave us a message um, on Instagram or something. If you just want to share some of the things that appear on your altar to help out other beginner witches that are maybe you're looking for ideas, some common things that you keep on there or what type of altars you keep. If you have, you know, deity or ancestor altars, um, what 
you know, your lineage looks like of things that you have on there. Definitely share that in the comments on Instagram for other people that are looking for ideas. Yeah. And that is all we have for you on altars. So we will definitely see you next week. Bye guys. Thanks for listening. Need even more witchcraft? Subscribe to our Patreon account for tons of exclusive bonus content and order supplies from our Etsy store. Reach out on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast or by email to witchwednesdays at gmail.com if you have any questions or comments. Find all these links and more at witchwednesdays.com.